Good morning. My name is Brian, and I'd like to welcome those of you that are here and everyone online. Uh, welcome to Luminary. Uh, if this is your first time here, we'd like to thank you for coming. Uh, may you experience the love of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place like we do every week. <clears throat> we look forward to spending the next hour worshiping and learning with you in God's presence. You'll find a contact card in the bulletin. That's the little thing that tears off on the side of the bulletin. So if you fill that out, we'd love to get to know you better, and we promise not to bother you. Uh, we, but we're here to help. We, we won't bother you. We'll come over for lunch maybe. But no, we, we, won't, we won't bother you, but we, we're here to help. And the other card that it, you don't see in this stuff, but it's actually out on the table right out front there, is a prayer request card. So some people, rather than declaring what their prayers are, they would rather write them because we learn in different ways. So if you have a prayer request, fill that out, and we'll make sure that that gets prayed on and that we uh, help you. So know that. Now, um, I want to highlight a couple of upcoming events in the bulletin. This afternoon at 3 o'clock, we're going to meet right back here for a question and answer session with Reverend Dave Grant. Now, Dave is actually the first pastor of the new Spring City Methodist Church, which almost exactly one year ago joined the Worldwide Global Methodist Church Organization after they disaffiliated from the United Methodist Church Organization. So, as many of you know, we also disaffiliated from the United Methodist Church Organization last year, and now we have an opportunity to join the Global Methodist Church. So if you're interested in learning anything and everything about the GMC, the Global Methodist Church Organization, come see Dave with us this afternoon at three o'clock, right. And you can also refer to, in the bulletin, there's a, a luminary website that has more information because we have a lot of people who've been working on this. So there's a lot of information out there. And, and if you want to, you can also go to globalmethodist.org on the web and learn all about what they say about themselves. So that's important. Now, John's going to tell us a little bit more about what we have to do next week. Thank you, Brian. Uh, next week, April 21st, is our church conference where we will decide whether we join the Global Methodist Church or we continue to re remain to be an independent church. So next uh, Sunday at 5 p.m., we'll have a church conference. And uh, members and non-members are welcome to attend, but only members will be able to vote. Uh, the, a simple majority will be required to determine the outcome. So if it's a tie vote, we will stay a independent church. So you have to have more than 50% to determine the outcome, whichever which way it goes. Um, and like I say, both members and non-members will be able to attend that meeting if they, if they so choose. So uh, mark your calendars and, and try to be sure and be here uh, next Sunday night at an evening at 5 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Good Thank you, John. Okay. Um, a couple other deadlines. T tomorrow is the deadline for the student scholarship application forms. They need to be turned in tomorrow, April 15th. I think there's some other April 15th deadline out there, but I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that one really is. Uh, any event, um, our monthly potluck community dinner is this Wednesday, April 17th at 6 p.m. 3, 5, 6 p.m. So this is a great opportunity to invite friends and neighbors over to check us out, or if you're new here, come join us. We'll break bread with you and get to know you better. So that's a great place to be. Are there any other upcoming events that we need to mention? Any other events? Anybody? Okay, well, they got everything covered. So, okay, let, let's pray. 
Father, thank you for bringing each of us back safely to this sanctuary. We, we gladly surrender our lives to you in worship and praise. We invite your beautiful Holy Spirit to move freely amongst us. Come dwell in each of our hearts. Equip us, challenge us, comfort us, teach us. Inspire us as we learn more about your majestic ways. We trust and obey you. Father, as we meet now, may we behold your beauty and encounter your grace. And we ask all of this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's stand for the opening hymn. Let's do verses 1, 2, and 4 today. <coughs> few minutes is going to teach us about storm management, I think, storm management. And, and of course, the most famous storm of all was the one that Jesus miraculously calmed in the Sea of Galilee. 
So that got me thinking about the biblical magnificence of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, did you know these facts about the Sea of Galilee? The Sea of Galilee is really a freshwater lake that's a little over 12 miles long and about eight miles wide. You can actually drive the entire circumference of the Sea of Galilee in only 32 miles. The whole lake area is 64 square miles, about the size of Washington, D.C. It sits 700 feet below sea level, which makes it the lowest freshwater lake in the entire world, 700 feet below. And due to the geological features on either side of the Sea of Galilee, the sudden and severe storms occur regularly uh, on its waters because when the cool air flows over the eastern mountains of the Golan Heights down to the west and onto the surface of the lake, which can be very hot, weather can get really, really dicey. So Galilee, the area, is mentioned 67 times in the Bible under a few different names. And it appears more predominantly in the New Testament, 64 times, compared to the Old Testament, nine times. And 11 of the 12 apostles came from Galilee. Apparently, Judas came from Judea, but he lived in Galilee. So all of the, all of the apostles lived in Galilee. According to the Gospels, Jesus' earthly ministry centered around the Sea of Galilee, including 19 of Jesus' 32 parables and 25 of Jesus' 33 miracles. Some scholars estimate that over 65% of all New Testament events occurred in and around the Sea of Galilee, including the biblical megascenes, such as the Sermon on the Mount, walking on water, the Transfiguration, they all occurred there. Sea of Galilee, amazing place, amazing place. All right. It's that time when we want to move over to joys and concerns, and I think Rick is going to tell us all about the wonderful yard sale that just happened. Brian, that was pretty impressive, but you didn't witness the yard sale. <laughs> you, you're right about that. That's right. But I had my spy there. <laughs> we did. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, we had a wonderful sale. Uh, most everybody here was involved. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, a couple things. Do y'all even know who your outreach chairperson is? Yes. Ms. Sherry, would you stand up? Yes. <coughs> <coughs> stay, stay standing. Stay standing. I want to recognize people that helped on the sale. Uh, if you had anything to do with the wonderful lunches we had all week long, stand up. Come on, Jim. Jim. Don't, don't, be, don't be shy. Does that count if you ate them, too? No, there you go. Uh, if you contributed to all, any at all, of the bake sale, if you ate it, if you purchased it, if you brought it, Stand up. Sold it. Thank you, Twinkle. Sold it. Stay, keep standing. If you priced 99% of the things in the sale, stand up, Betsy. <laughs> Betsy, <clears throat> I don't know how much there was, but there were thousands of items, and Betsy priced them all. Um, if you worked even one hour, setting up for the cell, during the cell, or helping us keep everything cleaned up, stand up. Which one hour? Okay. And lastly, if you, Melvin, you can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was your knees, but it's too tired. Huh? Okay. Anyway, Melvin. Melvin helped greatly, so he, uh, he's re refusing to stand. That's fine. Uh, lastly, if you couldn't make it to the sales because you had to work and you had to listen to your spouse after they got home, stand up. <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> Sherry. 
Brian, <laughs> they, they too were a part of. Uh, and Ron, this is what it's about. I agree with you. All these people. I agree with you. It's what makes this church great. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, if you bought something, if you donated or you sold something, stand up. <laughs> okay. All right. But thank you so much. And that, that's, that's what made the sale special was all of y'all's help. You can sit down. Uh, but you've done so good. Let me tell you what you did do. Uh, the yard sale itself on the ground floor out here, we did $5,760. The bake sale, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> the bake sale did $474, selling cookies and cakes. And this is the most phenomenal thing, the clothes closet upstairs. Did I recognize the clothes closet? If you were at the clothes closet, I didn't recognize you stand up. There's a lot of people, there you go, all right. The most phenomenal thing on the sale was the clothes closet. They sold their goods for $1 a piece upstairs. They sold 1,306 pieces of clothes. <laughs> and all that comes up to $7,539. So great, great effort. We, uh, we closed the doors at two o'clock. We started a little early, Sherry, a quarter till, but we were floor swept at three o'clock. We had 46 tables, chairs, and racks to carry back upstairs. And the only thing that slowed us down was the elevator. <laughs> we, couldn't, we couldn't get up there quick enough, but a great effort by all. And one last thing, Brian, and I'll, I'll get away. Uh, Lee Cates. I get emotional over money. Uh, Lee Cates, I don't know if you know Lee Cates. Uh, a lot of y'all don't. Uh, he's one of our fine members of the early service. And um, he oozes the Lord. <laughs> and Bill, it'll get on you if you don't be careful. <laughs> if you talk to Lee, it will ooze and get on you, and you just can't help it. Uh, Lee come to me this morning wanting to donate and match the funds that we raised Saturday at the yard sale at the half price. And that was $1,220. Wow. So we got a matching fund for what we did there. What a fine example and a great person to work with. He, he worked the door all weekend long and it helped all week and uh, very encouraged by by Lee and his uh, grace. And uh, I think it'll do it. All right. But thank you. Brian, just one second. What you also, what Rick didn't mention, that the man with the measuring tape, Rick Matthews, is the one that really coordinates this entire event. He measures the space between the tables. He's got the layout of where we're going to put everything. And he keeps us all on track. So he didn't take his due. Fantastic. Now, I understand the, the, the bake sale was great, and someone also stepped up. Is that true? Did someone stepped up to complete the funds needed for the? Uh... Yes, sir. Yeah, can you talk about that, please? Is that on? Yeah. Okay, go, all right, good. I'm sorry, I don't know how to work these things. Um, yes, I, first of all, I just wanna say, the, the meal that we had on Saturday, and we had the most people there, I think, didn't we have like 30 people there? It seemed like it. We fed about 30, and the meal that we had was a recipe that was sent to me by Lee Cates, and it's called Jailhouse Rice. And if you have not had this, call me and I'll give you the recipe. It's really, really good stuff. So everybody was raving about it. So thank you, Lee, for that. And the other thing that is, uh, I just can't, it's such a, 
a blessing to me is that s several people stepped up and paid off whatever else was owed on the s new stove and convection oven. And so I just want to say thank you so much. You guys are the best. And I will cook for you until, probably till I die. <laughs> if I can, if I can still walk, I'll do it. So anyway, thank you so much. And when she does die, you'll see her floating up because <laughs> she keeps us all fortified. But I think most people here today will agree with me. The first word out of your mouth when you jumped out of bed this morning was, ouch. <laughs> All right. Are there other joys before we move on to concerns? Other joys? Now, uh, regarding concerns on the concerns front, um, I think I need to take us back to Israel a little bit. Um, in the in the Gaza, I'm sorry, the, the Galilee Panhandle is actually 25 miles north of the Sea of Galilee. And the reason I bring that up is because last night, the air raid sirens in the Galilee Panhandle went off. Why? Because there were Iranian missiles from Lebanon and kamikaze drones from Iran that came raining down. If you haven't read that news, it's important for you to know that because we have a big concern in front of us about escalation in a Middle East war. So let's acknowledge that. Other concerns that we have, I see that there's 17 specific people and three groups of people listed as being in the middle of storms. Uh, are there others, other prayer requests and other concerns that we should be talking about? Okay. Well, then again, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you are with us here in the storms of our lives. Thank you that we don't have to rely on circumstances and that we can let go of our expectations and instead put our eyes on you. Thank you for the reminder of who you are, that even the wind and waves obey you. Bless each of us with the ability to just rest in you in the midst of the storms as you help us live the reality of your love. Please intervene in this Middle East conflict now happening and help us not get drawn in there unless that's your will. Please guide our pastor search committee to do a successful outcome that pleases you. And bless Pastor Ron for today's message and, and for protecting him. Um, some of you may know Pastor Ron had some tests done this week and it appears as though they came out positive. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And so together now, let's pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, ushers, come on forward. We'll take the offering.
Thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> used up just about all of my good jokes. <laughs> but the one I keep thinking of this morning is happened to me. Might get a little intimate, but I think you might enjoy it regardless. When I was 18 years of age, I was pastoring two little Methodist churches, living at home with my family, traveling to school every day, and then three services every Sunday. One of them was Union Grove out in Polk County, down near the Georgia line. And that particular morning, the heat was unusual for the season, and wasps were flying 
all around the ceiling. You know how. If you've been in an old wooden church, you know they can make a lot of noise and attract a lot of attention. Right in the middle of my sermon, I felt a sharp pain. Right inside my trousers. <laughs> I warned you. And I'm thinking, how am I going to get out of this? The answer is prayer. <laughs> Would every head be bowed and every eye be closed? <laughs> and which I was sure that all of them were pious. I looked, and I didn't see a thing. <laughs> Same ordeal, another prayer, another examination, and another sharp pain. This was not supposed to happen to an experienced man, much less an 18-year-old kid. But I finally decided I'd risk it long enough. I ask that every head be bowed and every eye be closed, to which I then made my exit out the church. <laughs> well, the question is, how do you get back in? And all I could say next Sunday was, I had a few problems and I had to leave unexpectedly. And Jody Lauderdale, who was the county road commissioner, punched his wife and said, I know there's something wrong with that boy. <laughs> well, that's my joke for the morning. <laughs> I want to begin a series of messages with you. When we face the stubborn, trouble, painful experiences in life, what do we do? And this morning it's, what do we do when the storms of life are raging? And I'd like for you to hear with me from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 4, verse 35. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on the cushion. And they awoke him and said unto him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said, Why were you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said one to another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The word of God for the people of God, and we say thanks be unto God. Little Andrea Gale sailed out of Gloucester, Massachusetts, on October the 28th, 1991, with her crew of six fishermen who had dreams of going to the northern banks for a very abundant catch of the season. But Andrea Gale and her crew had no idea that three storms were headed their way. 
Two of them were coming out of Canada and out of the Arctic. Hurricane Grace was making her way up the East Coast, and all three of these storms marking three marks on the compass, three of them were all going to hit at the same time and the same place where the little boat was fishing. A little wreckage of the boat was found, and to the surprise of so many who looked, they did find the six bodies of the seamen who were lost. But what happened to the Andrea Gale in the Atlantic was it just exactly what the disciples were afraid was going to happen to them. They were in that Sea of Galilee that could go suddenly volatile and a storm would break out on that deep, deep sea. And Jesus decided that it was time to go somewhere else. Some people think he was testing his disciples. I don't know. But he was asleep in the stern in the back of the boat. Jesus, Jesus, get up. Jesus, don't you know we are about to drown here? And he said, he stood up and said, peace, peace, be still. Raises three questions. And we can't live very long without asking them and looking for answers. First one, Jesus, don't you know what we're going through? Don't you know the water is washing over the boat? Jesus, don't you know I've lost my job? Jesus, don't you know my child is sick? Jesus, don't you know, as, and I heard one lady scream this as I got my test one day a couple of weeks ago, walking outside of Ray County Hospital, wringing her hands at apparent loss of a loved one. Oh, God, she cried. Oh, God, how can I take it any more than this? Well, the answer is, does Jesus care? Remember that song that's in the Cokesbury hymnal? Does Jesus care? I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief and my sad heart ache till it nearly breaks. I know my Savior cares. Jesus, do you care? Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. Second question. Jesus had one for them. What's happened to your faith? Keep in mind that they had followed him around. They had seen his miracles. They knew that he was a miracle worker, but somehow they had not made the connection that he had the gift of God and was God. So, where's your faith? Can I give you Ron's simple formula for finding faith? Really, see one, hope. Number two, mesh your hope with the Word of God because if it's contrary to the Word of God, it won't last. And number three, your hope has turned into faith that you can cling to and cry and ask God for more. No, you don't lose it. Oh, it gets scarred, gets tested, gets hard. But if you have a genuine faith in God that is based upon 
your hope and the word of God, then walk on it. For by faith are you saved through faith. And then I'll ask you one question. One question. Which do you think came first? The words to the storm or the words to the disciples? I used to have fun answering that before someone realized the answer was in the scriptures. Jesus quietened the storm before he could bring peace to the hearts of the disciples. I saw this graphically in a way I'll never forget. I was asked to serve as a volunteer in rehabilitation center in Bristol. Found that my colleague in cooperation was a Catholic priest and Jim Grealish and I had a great time together. But the nurse, who was a member of my church, said, there's someone in here you need to see. I didn't think she wanted to see me because whenever I came in the door, she turned her back to me and let out a big oath. No, I'm not going to say it. My tongue would fall out. And I just sat there. What happened? She said, I dreamed I went to hell last night. And she started to show me the burn, but I took her word for it. I dreamed I went to hell last night. Make a long story short, they arranged for me to See her every, every day I went, was in the hospital, and it worked. And I realized that what was happening with her was exactly what was happening with the disciples. She wasn't going to have peace of mind and heart, and she got until she got out of the hell she was living in. That's why the first answer for recovery oftentimes is just to say no. Say no, because you've got to stop the storms out there before you find peace of your mind and your heart. It can be yours. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Oh, it's not as the world gives I unto you. So let your heart be focused on him who loved you, gave himself for you, and offers to you peace of mind and of heart and even body and soul. And the people of God said, Amen. Let's sing together. I'm closing him. 156. If you'd like to come and kneel at this rail and make your prayers and seek your peace, you're more than welcome. Come as we say. <laughs>
peace so with you always.